Well, hello everybody. It's Ian, the storyteller here, coming to you from Eureka at home. And I hope you're enjoying yourselves at home. And here's something that I hope will brighten up your time. It's a little story for you. Now, last month was National Romany Month. It was a time to celebrate people who don't live in houses, but travel a land. And that's kind of what we do, living on our boat. We travel up and down the land and we don't settle for too long anywhere. And so we went looking for a story to celebrate that time. And my wife, Jo, found this beautiful story. And we very much hope you enjoy it. This story takes us all the way to the highlands of Scotland, a place called Laig. And in Laig, at the time of this story, there was a young man. Now his house, a little crofter's house, stood beneath the old standing stones upon the moors. Now the boy had a very special job. He looked after bees. Now you might think it was a lonely life living up there in the crofter's house beneath the standing stones. But he wasn't lonely at all. Now some people thought that he talked to those bees and he probably did and he wasn't quite sure whether they understood so much what he said, but they seemed to just live in harmony with each other and all was well. One day, the young man, he was sat outside his cottage. It was the height of summer. The flowers and the lavender were in bloom. And he noticed that around him he could hear the sounds of dogs baying and barking like they were at chase. And as he looked up the fields, he noticed a hare running for its life. Well, straight towards him it came, straight towards the crofter's house. And as he stood up, he put out his hands and that hare, it leapt clear into his arms. Well, he took that hare and he hid it under the shirts of his coat and as the dogs came closer well he took a stick and he beat them away and it was only when the bane house had gone that he opened up his coat and he took out that hair and he looked at it now he'd seen dark eyed hairs before but he'd never seen a hair with bright blue eyes and he could see Behind those eyes, there was thought and intelligence. Well, he put the hair down and he turned to go inside his house. But the hair followed him. And it followed him all day long. And as he sat down that night to eat his evening meal, the hair, it jumped up on the table and it joined him. And he decided in that moment to keep that hair as a pet. But any beekeeper that you know will tell you that you should never do anything without consulting your bees because you know they'll fly away if they're not happy and so the next day the beekeeper he took his hair outside and he introduced the hair to the bees well they buzzed busily around the man and the hair they came down to meet the hair until eventually well she didn't give a care the bees they went back to the hives and that just seemed to be the way it was going to be. All was well. And the seasons moved. And one late summer day, the young boy, the young man, he was sat on the porch of his crofter's house. The hare was sat comfortably by his feet. And he noticed up by the old stone circle, the old standing stones, there was an old woman walking down towards him and he thought well maybe he had a customer there was much honey to sell at the end of a season maybe she was coming down and maybe he would take a few coins but as she arrived she walked clear of the hives paid them no attention she said that hair i'll take that hair off your hands if you like but the young man he stood up and he faced the old woman and then said You'll not be taking the hair anywhere. I'll pay a good price, said the old lady. 
But he stood there and he crossed his arms across his chest and he said, I'll take no money for the hair now. Be on your way. Well, he raised his voice just loud enough that out from the hive there came a bee. And it started to buzz around the head of the old lady. Well, it buzzed so loud that eventually out from the hives there came many bees, a whole swarm. And they swarmed around that old lady. And I'll tell you, they chased her clear away. And just at the last moment, they could hear her say, you keep an eye on that hair, young man. Well, later that week, he went off down into the town. And he met an old friend. And just as they were talking and exchanging news, off in the distance in the market, he saw the old lady and he drew his friend's attention to her. Well, he looked at his friend and said, if you'll take my advice, you'll stay far away from that old lady. She's a witch and a powerful one at that and she'll do you no good. Well, slowly the seasons changed and summer, it turned to autumn. And as autumn came and the days came shorter and cooler, journeys happened. Birds flew south. The hives, they grew quieter. For you know, there were Berries in the brambles and no honey to be made and the bees, they came back to their hives and found beds for their winters. But not just animals, humans moved. Off in the distance, the lad would often see gypsy families, travellers moving south for the winter in their caravans, but most on the main roads. So he was surprised one day to look from his crofter's house to see an old gypsy family moving across the old track behind his house and so he gave them a wave. And the young lad that was driving that cart, that old Vardo, he gave a little salute of his whip just to say hello and on they went. But it were only later that day that the young man came out of his house and he noticed that something had dropped off the back of that gypsy cart, a bag of old grain. And as he went up to the old grain, he thought to, uh, to himself, the old horse that had pulled that dray across the land, it'd be hungry that night. And what kind of man would he be if he didn't go and help? And so he went with the time he had to his own horse and cart. And he tethered the horse and cart and he, picked up that bag of grain and he put it onto the dray and he followed the gypsy caravan down the road. Well, eventually, because he was lighter than them, he pulled alongside them and stopped them. Well, that traveller family, they were suspicious, you see, and they asked the young man what he wanted. Then he explained. And the young gypsy man, he said, what you are gorgeous, a man of a house, have come all the way up this path to deliver something that we've lost, well, that's something unheard of. Why would you take that time? And he looked and he said, well, what kind of man would I be if I denied a horse of a meal that he'd worked so hard for? And so they became friends and they stopped for a while to talk. And it was then that the gypsy man, he looked down and he saw the hair and he saw its blue eyes and he said, that's no hair at all. What else is it? Said the crofter man, the beekeeper. What else but a hair? And he cried, Grandma, would you come and have a look? Well, out from the cart came an old lady. Grandma, would you tell this man that's no hair at all? For no hair has ever had bright blue eyes. Well, very gently, she stretched out her old arms her old hands and she took that hair and she stroked it and she looked it deep in its eyes and then she looked at the crofterman the beekeeper and said that's no hair at all that's a young woman cursed by a witch no doubt you're a beekeeper are you do you know the language of the bees 
He said, I don't know if I know the language of bees, but it seems that they understand me. Well, that's enough, said the old gypsy lady. I'll give you the advice I can for helping us out. All Hallows Eve comes soon. And that's a height of a witch's power. And if ever she's going to come back for this girl, that's when she'll come. So you go home and you talk to them, to the bees, in their winter rest. And on All Hallows Eve you keep the door wide open. But you take that hair and you tie it strong with a rope to your body. And you set off on horse and cart and you travel as far as you can. And as much as that hair it struggles you hold on tight. And that's the best I can do for you. And that's what he did. He heeded the old gypsy woman's advice. And he took the hair and he talked to the bees and they buzzed busily, even though it was winter. All Hallow's Eve arrived and he took a rope and he tied it hard around the hare's neck. And he tied it hard around his arm so the hare couldn't get loose. He left the door open. And you know, he left a Beltane fire, a Samhain fire lit in the yard. And then he sat out at moonlight. He climbed on the horse and the cart. And he whipped those horses as hard as he could. And he set off across the land, faster and faster, further and further away from his farm. Well, the moon was high up in the sky but suddenly the clouds they covered the moon and as the clouds covered the moon didn't that hair start to struggle well struggle it did as hard as it could and he knew it was midnight but then the clouds they parted and the moon appeared in the sky and the struggle stopped and as the man looked down he knew that no longer was he holding a hair. In his arms was the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen. Well, they travelled on. Eventually, summer came, and the couple, they took the long road home, and they found a place to marry. And that took them, full journey, back to the village where the man's friend lived and when they arrived he introduced his friend to his new wife and they swapped stories and it came round to the story of the old woman up beyond the standing stones he said a curious thing she was seen in winter time being chased clear away from the moors by a swarm of bees and she's never been seen since and might never be seen again but how strange to be chased away by a swarm of bees in winter time when bees should be in their bed but the man and his new bride his wife they went home and they were greeted by the swarm of the bees they returned there to their crofter's house. And you know, as far as I know, up in Leg, in the highlands of Scotland, they lived there with the bees ever since. And that, dear friends, is the end of our story. So much love, much light. From Eureka at home, from Ian and Joe, the storytellers. Much love. Good night.